We are starting a brand new series today. It is called Dangerous Habits. Woo! No, you did. Dangerous Habits. We're talking about the power of making a great habit. I read a book recently. In fact, our whole staff did by James Clear. His title was called Atomic Habits. One of my favorite lines in this book was, he says, intensity makes for a great story, but consistency makes for great progress. And I'm, I want to talk to our church about making consistency your aim, making, making daily habits, making living a disciplined lifestyle. In fact, Dallas Willard years ago uh, wrote a book called The Celebration of Disciplines. Our culture's like, wait, wait, well, I want the celebration of Netflix. Where's the celebration of sleeping in? Where's the celebration of doing whatever whim I feel or am led by? No, I want to talk to you about your life because, again, intensity is an awesome story, but consistency. I want to talk to you about your life, the compound of consistency. I want to get you into daily habits. These are my routines. These are my, in fact, I want to put into your life, oh, I'm calling these ones, these are holy habits. You need to put in your life some habits that are holy. They're going to connect you with God. I want to start out the gate. Habit number one. I'm taking this old school with our church. We, we, need to, we don't want to be this, this new church. In fact, next Sunday, you got to make plans. you got to celebrate with us. Next Sunday is Anniversary Sunday. Oh, come on. I felt like Nordstrom when I said it. It's Anniversary Sunday. Next Sunday, we are turning six years old. I cannot wait. We're going to be six. Break out the piñata, the rotata. Break out the guacamole for holy. We're going to party next Sunday for Anniversary Sunday. But we're just a new church. And I don't want in the newness to think for one second that we can't get some compound of consistency. Because I want to tell you, for about six years, Zoe's been doing the same thing. We've been having church on Sundays, but Monday through Saturday, we've been getting together in connect groups. Monday through Saturday, we've been doing I Love My City, except for six years. For six years, we've been giving our tithes and our offerings. For six years, we've been fasting in the month of January. I'm, I'm, it's just the compound of consistency. Intensity, well, that's a great story. But consistency? You build great progress right there. And I want to build growth into your life. Where you don't have to dream about growth. No, you just chip away at that. You know, get compounded consistency into your life. And I want to start with, in my opinion, the most lethal, powerful discipline that you can create in your life. In fact, I want to start with this. Write down the title of installment one, episode one, sermon one. Discipline Uno. We'll start with, write this down. We're going to start with building into our discipline life quiet time. Quiet time. Now, I lost some of y'all right away because some of y'all from the 90s. And in the 90s, quiet time was a church phrase. In the 90s, people would be like, how was your quiet time? Did you have your quiet time? What's, what, what are you doing during your quiet time? And for some reason, the pendulum swung too far, and we thought we translated quiet time for legalism. We said, I don't have to have a quiet time. God loves me as I am. I don't have to have a quiet time. I can connect with God however I want. I don't have to have a quiet time. I'm good on my own. And we swung out the pendulum to grace, and we said, the grace of God loves me just as I am. No, fam, nobody's trying to tell you that grace doesn't love you. But you need quiet time because Jesus needed quiet time. You need quiet time because the Bible prescribes quiet time. You need quiet time to get rid of all the distractions and all the noise and all the issues and all the stress and all the baggage and all the children. Parents, give me an amen. So you can get quiet Oh, I love Psalm 46. Put it on the screen there. Psalm 46 says, Be still and know that I am God. 
When you run around trying to solve everything and take care of your to-do list and try to build your business, build your life, take care of you, sometimes you're like, God, are you real? Are you out there? Do you care? But when you get quiet, you put down your phone, you put your laptop across the room, turn off the TV, some of you are like, oh gosh, I, I, don't, I don't like this feeling. I, what do I do? I'm, it's quiet. It's silent. This is my worst nightmare. I don't like silence. Silence is like, it's deafening. It's too loud. It scares me. I don't even know what to do with God if I get quiet with God. No, no, no. You know you're with God when it's easy. You know God showed up when there's no striving. There's no stress. There's no worry. There's no trouble. All of your problems fade into the background when you're in the presence of the Lord. And so you need some quiet time. I'm prescribing a new habit for some of you. I'm prescribing an old habit for some of you. And it's called quiet time. Jesus time. God time. Just resting time. Time to ponder. Time to reflect. Time to think time to consider, time to pray. Oh, I love the great missionary Hudson Taylor who went to China and and a famous, one of the most famous missionaries in the history of the world. He said your spiritual life is, is boiled down to three things. It's Bible reading, prayer, and denial of the flesh. So, some of us, we haven't read the Bible in ages. We get an alert on our phone that's the scripture of the day. No, we need quiet time to get beyond a scripture of the day so I can pray, I can ponder, I can get peace, I can read the scriptures over my life. And I was talking to somebody on this trip, this last trip we were on, and they're saying one of their heroes in the faith, he would sleep every night with the Bible over his eyes. Because he wanted the Bible to be all, the, the, the lens of the scripture to see how he saw people in the world. See, we need some quiet time for all your anxiety, for all your stress, for all your pressures, for all your problems, for all your issues. If you keep running this way, you're going to burn out. But you need some time with Jesus. Look at Psalm. Watch Psalm 1. This is, the, this is how the Psalm starts. Psalm 1 clap for our keyboard player which is just drew killing it as always psalm one look at this blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly it's talking to cowboy fans right there football season back nor stands in the path of sinners nor sits in the seat of the scornful so he's not blessed just because he's a good person he also denies himself of these things Verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates both day and night. He shall be like, because he spends quiet time, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Why? Because he spends time in God's word and he has quiet time. He will bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also will not wither. And whatever he does, whatever he does, I don't care what industry, I don't care what field. He could be in tech. He could be in plumbing. He could be a teacher. He could be a coach. He could be a lawyer. He could be a doctor. He could be a pastor. He could be a pre. It doesn't matter. Whatever he does... He prospers because he has, because she has quiet time, quiet time, quiet time. Just some time to ponder, some time to pray, some time to think, some time to read, some time to consider, some time to see, see, see. I want to give you three thoughts to write down today. Here's the problem, the problem, write down the problem. The problem is that we're too distracted. I've been using this phrase. I got it from one of my favorite preachers, Jensen Franklin. He coined the phrase weapons of mass distraction. And the enemy knows if he can get you to be distracted by your phone. The average person picks up their phone or thinks about their phone over 2,000 times per day. So you're thinking about the phone. It's drawing you. It's con- It's just refresh, refresh, refresh. Anybody posting something new? Anybody? Is there a new TikTok up there? Is there new? Is there? Is there? Did I get a text? Did I get, a, did I get an email? Did I, did I scroll through my text? Did I, did I, did I, 
started watching Netflix. I just, and, and I got to think about Netflix. I got to think about Candy Crush. I got to think about TikTok. I got to think. I just, I just, I, I, I got to be. I got this do- dopamine hit. I got to be stimulated. I got to be stimulated. I got to be stimulated. And because I am so distracted by technology, busyness of life, schedule, I somehow disconnect from God. And when I, by the way, you are no good disconnected from God. You are only good when you're connected to the Father. Jesus said, heads up, you are not a vine. I'm a vine. You are not strong on your own. You try and get self-sufficient and self-reliant and self and independent. Good luck, Chuck. He said, no, no, I'm the vine. You're a branch. You stay connected with me. You're going to flourish. Apart from me, Jesus said, you do no good thing. So when we get all distracted and all into stimulation, all into all this, this that, and the other, we, some of you have read Malcolm Gladwell's book about the 10,000-hour rule. And we, we should put that into our craft. We should put that into our spiritual life. But some of us have put that into Fortnite. Some of us have 10,000 hours into Instagram. We don't have 10,000 hours into our spiritual life. We don't have 10,000 hours into our Word of God. Stop being distracted by things that promise rest but never delivered. Promise satisfaction, but you feel so unsatisfied. These things that say, I'll hook you up. I'll take care of you. I'll give you a break. Why are you so weary? Why are you so tired? Because it's, you're so distracted. Watch what Jesus says. And I love these scriptures right here in Matthew, Matthew 11. Listen to what he says. Are you tired? And the whole church answered, yes. <laughs> are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Watch Jesus. He says, come to me. Get away with me and you will recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me and watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything uh, heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. He goes, are you guys tired? And everybody's like, super Are you worn out? Yes. Come to me. Come get some quiet time. Put down your phone. Put down your laptop. Put down your to-do list. Come to I I in the other translation it says, my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Yoke in this context, yoke is the way of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus. If you ever got around Jesus, you would meet the lightest, happiest person on the planet. And he says, watch, come learn from me. I won't put anything heavy on you. Religion is heavy. Schedule is burdensome. Legalism is hard to carry. He said, when you, when you learn from me the unforced rhythms of grace, he said, you'll live light. You'll live free. You'll enjoy, you'll recover your life. He said, I'm, I, you are a disciple, which means you're an apprentice. Learn from me. Watch how I do it. Watch how I, I spend time with God. Watch how I treat other humans. Watch the empathy and the compassion. Watch the grace that I give. Watch the peace that I carry. Watch the joy from my spirit. He said, all, all that burnout, all that legalism, all that religion, all those technology devices, all that schedule, all that rat race, all that earn, all that strive, you're burnt out. Come to me. Get a quiet time. Now, again, this is old school. I remember I moved to Los Angeles for the first time in 1998, hair down to here, long hair, don't care. I remember I moved to Los Angeles. I was going to Bible college. So, so I moved here in 1998. I was 18 years old. I was a freshman at Bible college in San Dimas, California. I'll never forget one of the first nights in my dorm. We had three levels in the guy's dorm. I was on the second floor. And on the second floor, we had two pay phones. This is before cell phones. We had two pay phones, and we had a conference room, and we had a prayer room. You better put a prayer room on the Bible College second floor. So I'll never forget one of my buddies I had just made friends with. He was from Oregon, from Oregon. And so he comes out of the prayer room, and I was like, my man, like, okay, like, 
you so you pray? And he was like, he was like, yeah, man, I just, I just, I just, I, I gotta have jam time. And I was like, jam time? Oh, do tell. Jam time. He's like, man, I'm, I'm addicted. I just, I need Jesus and me time. I need. He dropped a bar. I was like, oh, okay. Well, I'm new to Bible college, okay. <laughs> but he was saying, I, 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 my soul craves it. I've developed this habit. I developed this lifestyle where I know I'm not good without jam. I know I'm not good without quiet time. I know I can get ornery and cranky. I know I can get distracted. I know I can, I can become a person I don't want to become. I need quiet time to quiet my soul. I need some time where I can get with God and God can heal me. He can wash over me. He can remind me of my calling. He can, he can remind me of prophetic words that have been spoken over my life. I need some quiet time. I don't need more social media. I don't need to watch more videos. I don't need another uh, season one, season two. I don't need more Ted Lasso. I need more Jesus. I need more God. I need more of his presence. Come on, anybody down to say yes to the invitation from heaven. Come to me. Are you tired? Are you weary? Are you burnt out? Are you exhausted? See, you thought COVID was just time off. You thought COVID was a break from God. COVID should have been the time that we got the most quiet, but we got the most distracted. Should have been the time we got the most rest, but we're the most burnt out. 3.9 million people in America quit their job in April because they're going, it's too much. I can't handle it. I don't want to do this. I'm exhausted. No, no, no. You don't need more vacation time. You need more God time. You can go on a vacation and come back empty. You need the presence of Jesus. You need the presence of God. He'll, he'll teach you. He'll recover your life. So listen, there's a problem. But I'm going to teach you my boys, son. To every problem, there is a solution. Like the Lakers. We didn't win the championship this year. Welcome Russell Westbrook. Come on, somebody. Clap like the Lord bless you. To every problem, there is a solution. So the problem is I'm distracted, but the solution, write it down in your notes today. The solution is a getaway. The solution is just, I just got to get away. I just got to... You ever be at a uh, social gathering and it's like going off and you feel like now is the perfect time to leave because no one is going to notice. I always say this to Julia, like, okay, let's go. We're slipping out now. And she's like, wait, did you say bye to the host? I'm like, um, yep. I'll explain in the car. Yep. I said bye in the spirit. We got to go. I got to slip. I got to get out of here. Jesus was the master of the getaway. He wouldn't even tell his crew. He's just like, I got to get away. Well, let me show you two verses, two scriptures in the Bible where Jesus gets away with the Father. Watch this of Jesus. Very early, Mark 1, 35, very early in the morning while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Very early while it was still dark, Jesus got up. He left the casa. He got to a solitary place. And there, he refreshed his phone. And there, he returned his emails. And there, he did all of his work. And there, he prayed. God, I, I, I love you. I'm, I'm here as your servant. Thank you for the mission of my life. Thank you that today you rule and reign. Thank you, God, that you are good. Thank you, God, for my calling. Thank you for strength. Lord, if there's anything you want to save me, I say search, no, try, test. If there's anything in me, there early in the morning, he left the house. He got to a solitary place, and there he prayed. He got away. He slipped away. He got out the house. Oh, I did this thing in June. I call it the June challenge. The, the, the genesis of the June challenge, by the way, my little brother, who pastors a church in Seattle, shout out to my little brother, Kyle. He posted this thing that he's doing hard 75. This 75 days uh, uh, is a hard challenge, 75 days something. It's, a, it's like two workouts a day, 45 minutes inside, 45 minutes outside. It's like drinking water, eating plan, this whole, uh, this whole thing. I was like, um, 
If that man could do 75 days of this challenge, I could do something for 30 days. So I made a very uh, fitting to my lifestyle challenge. One of the challenges I put in June was I'm going to get up every day at 5 a.m. So I did 5 a.m., 31 straight days. When we came to July, I was like, let's just bump it back an hour. Let's go to six. Five is a bit aggressive. I'm going to be honest. Never nap so much like I did in the month of June. And uh, so in, 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 in July, I did 6 a.m. And I got to tell you, there was something about getting up early in the morning while it was dark, leaving my house, getting to a solitary place, <clears throat> Starbucks, and praying. And praying, and reading, and pondering. Do you realize what a good dad I was in June? By the time my kids got up at like 7, 15, 7, 30, I already been with Jesus for like an hour. I'm like, what's good, kids? How are you guys? You're blessed and highly favored of the Lord. But what your stress is that you're not getting quiet time. You, 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 your, your anxiety is because you're not being with God. What, what, there was just one more, one more. This is Jesus. I love this in Luke. Now, Luke, the, the, the doctor, he writes it this way, Luke 5, 16. But Jesus often slipped away from them and went into the wilderness to pray. Gee, this was his holy habit. This was his routine. He didn't do this in January. No, no, no. He often slipped away into the wilderness to pray. I wonder if it would be said true of you that you often get away. You often slip away from the crowds. You often get quiet. You often get into solitary. Some of you are like, I would never want to be alone. I would never want it to be quiet. Now, I got to be honest. I love to be stimulated with, with television and music. First thing I do when I walk into my house, I've got two screens that I turn on, turn the game on. First thing I do, turn on this screen, that screen, get the game on. Next thing I do is turn on my sound system to put some, you know, I love background music. I'm always trying to find the right playlist for the right mood. Like someone's like, what kind of music? I'm like, well, what's the mood? Because sometimes you need some hip hop. Sometimes you need you need some jazz. Sometimes you need like a little French playlist while Julia's cooking. Sometimes you need some salsa. That's Taco Tuesday. You know, like when I was in Alabama, I listened to country music because I'm in Alabama. But I'm I like plasmas and music and I'm all for I'm on my phone. I work. But I have developed a daily discipline that early in the morning, I get up, I leave my house, and I get quiet before God. This has been a discipline that I created in my life when I was 19 years old. Since I was 19, I get up when it's dark, I leave my house, I grab coffee, because God will do nothing in your life until you drink coffee, then revival. But I wonder if you could apply the solution. Because we already know what the problem looks like. The problem is stress and burnout and exhaustion and, and angst. And you're in a hurry and you're always late. You're always on edge. You're always catching up. But if you lived... See, some of us, we have to understand, you're trying to go for strength, but when you get quiet time, you come out of strength. So you're trying to find some gym membership, some, some eating plan, some, some, some wellness instructor. You're trying to find something to satisfy your soul's desire. Only God can do that. So it's the problem of your life, but Jesus is the solution of your life. He's the solution for your soul. He is your soul's craving. And when you get quiet before God, no, no screens, no, 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 no plasmas, no, 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 no Spotify, just, just me in heaven, just me and the creator of the, think about that. The creator of the universe wants to spend time with you. The one that hung the stars and hung the moon and everything with it. He, he wants you time. So there's a problem for our, all of our lives. But there's a solution for your life. And I want to paint just, just, just a picture of possibility. The possibility. Write that down. Number three, third and final point today. The possibility is strength for your journey. 
Strength for your future. Strength for what's ahead. Drew, you can come play behind me. I love this because I've always looked at the story of Jesus coming out of his baptism. Now, I don't know if you saw this. But Zoe, we had baptisms, and the baptisms were off the chart. We, we baptized people in Playa Vista or Marina Del Rey, and, and we, we baptized a whole bunch of people after, you know, so long not having baptisms. We did baptisms. It was awesome. And all these people came up out the water, and Zoe, we go, we're there on the beach. We'd go crazy. Jesus, when he got baptized, God went so crazy. It's the only time in Scripture that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit show up. Jesus comes up out of the water. The dove appears on his shoulder, symbolic of the Holy Spirit. And God opens the heavens. And he says, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. Straight after his baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, is led into the wilderness. Watch here Luke chapter 4, and I want to I show you where your life is headed. I want to show you what God is saying to you. Some of you need to, need to hear me. Lean, lean in this moment. Some of you need to understand what God's trying to say to you today. Because God is not trying to build just a spiritual practice. He is trying to build into you quiet time for strength time. Watch this. Luke chapter 4. Watch Jesus. Then Jesus, full of this Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Wherefore, 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was, well, you think? He was hungry. Now Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And it was in the wilderness that he was tempted. Now, why in the world would God, right out of the baptism, take his one and his only son, fill him with the Holy Ghost, and let him be led into the wilderness? And in the wilderness, knowing full well, he was going to be tempted by Satan himself to compromise. Because the father knew, my son is well equipped with strength to face his wilderness. See, some of you, COVID has been a wilderness season. And you've gone through hardship, and you've gone through temptation, and you've gone through depression, and you've gone through fallout, and you've gone through political unrest and racial injustice, and you've gone through so much on your soul, and this wilderness has pummeled you. But I want to tell you that quiet time gets you strength for your journey. I don't know what's up ahead. I don't know what God has in store for you. I can't foretell your future. I am not a fortune cookie. I am not a fortune teller. But I'm here to tell somebody, whatever the wilderness has, you will have strength for it. You will have wisdom for it. You will have joy for it. You will have peace for it. Come on, clap right there in your house. Just thank God. I know that I know I need quiet time. Jesus wasn't in wilderness like, oh, great. Oh, buddy. Oh, man. Oh, okay. Oh, you, you robbed me. You tricked me. You gypped me. Oh, really? You, now I'm in the wilderness? No, he had strength. He had strength. Why? Because he was quiet before the Father. And in that quietness, he got strength. In quietness, he got rest. Oh, I love this. Let me preach to somebody. Isaiah. Watch what the Bible says in Isaiah 30. In returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. In returning. In rest. In quietness. That shall strength. The Bible says that those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall rise on the wings of an eagle. They will run and they will not grow weary. They will walk and they will not faint. See, some of us, we relate more with the fainting than we do with the rising. <laughs> some of us, we go wait on the Lord. Um, I can't even wait for an email. You want me to wait on God? I don't even know how to wait for a text. You ever wait for the text when it's come back and you see the bubbles? You're like, come on, bro. Come on. Come on. What you doing? And then finally you just realize, oh, they're distracted. Oh, that thing's never coming. Okay, that's just, it's going to be like that for one month. We're going to see bubbles for a month. 
All of these things in our culture have promised shortcuts to save our time. And do you notice how you feel like you have no time? Do you notice how you feel like you, I, I just, I, I can't get enough sleep. I can't get enough rest. I can't get enough, I just can't, I can't figure it out. I can't, I don't know why. I'm just, I'm on edge with my kids. I'm on edge with my friends. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with myself. I'm mad at myself. I'm mad, just, oh, you know, and I'm in the wilderness. And God is saying to you today, in quietness and rest, you'll be saved. You have strength. I, I, I really feel like this is a pivotal time for our church. Going into year sixth, our sixth year of a church. And I, I, I feel like what God is saying to you, he's saying to us. This is not a year of running. It's a year of receiving. Because last year you tried running tired and you're not happy and you're not fulfilled and you keep trying to image manage tell everybody I'm fine you're not fine who are you kidding you're not okay and you'll never be okay without habit number one quiet time spending time with God what are you what are you doing later today uh I'll text you later um uh, uh let, let me get back to you I'm just I just yeah we'll we'll catch up in a little bit I gotta slip away why do you slip away so much? Ah, I don't know. That's what Jesus did. Jesus often got up while it was dark and he would just get alone with the Father and he would go to a solitary place and he would pray. And I figure since the perfect one, the Messiah needed to do it, I don't know about you, but I need to do it. He was perfect. I'm a human. I need Jesus. Have you recognized yet in your life we don't want God, we need God? It's not that I just desire Him. It's that I'm in need of Him. I am utterly dependent upon the presence of God. And if I don't get God, I don't get good. If I don't get God, I don't get right. And I need some time with the Father to say, You are my Son with whom I'm well pleased. Before you go into the wilderness, I just want to let you know I've got strength for you. Come on, clap in your house right now. And thank God, quiet time. And I believe at a quiet time, let me just read this one more time for emphasis out of Isaiah. I just, I can't get over these thoughts. In returning and rest, in quietness and confidence. Could it be that your confidence is about to show up double fold? Could it be that your confidence, when they tried to praise Jesus, he was like, oh, I'm good, man. I'm good. I don't need your likes or your comments. I'm good. I get my approval from the Father. Your life is about to change through quiet time. Father, I pray that this word today that is laced with grace, the truth of your presence, the truth of your word, I pray it will open up our hearts to spend time with you, Jesus. I thank you, God, for our church that people all through Zoe are going to say, I'm, I'm making an appointment. I'm going to start doing it in the morning. I'm going to start doing it in the afternoon. I'm going to meditate on his law both day and night. Just as the psalmist wrote in Psalm 1, I'm going to spend time with God because that's what I need. I don't need more money. I don't need more fame. I don't need more toys. I don't need more things. I don't need more friends. I need more of God. I pray this word will be applied in our church and applied in our homes, applied in our marriages. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, if you're there in your house and you want to say yes to Jesus for the very first time, right there in your house, just say yes to God right now. Just say yes, type it in the chat, or just say yes wherever you are, just say it. We're going to say this prayer together, and if that's your first time praying it, pray it with conviction. Say it with me. Say, Father God, thank you today for the gift of grace. I say yes to Jesus. I will love him, I accept him, and I will follow. 